Well, this is a happy surprise. Uh, I'm only expecting one knife, but it seems as though I got three. I got another package here, but this is going to be for another video. It's knife related, but only knife adjacent. So, let's see. What do we got in the yellow one? All right, we have a tooth on. Woo. What do we got in here? We have petrified fish. That was the one that I was expecting. And I have two. Huh. All right. Well, let's go ahead and uh, start opening these things up. This is the uh, Trevisa UMA04, in case anyone was uh, curious on my unboxing knife for the day. Just happened to be uh, sitting close by, so I figured I would uh, give it a little bit of use. Okay, I believe this is the one that I was waiting for. This is the Terra. Good chunk. And there we go. We got, uh, you know, your standard kind of drop point thing going on here. And cut the little tag off of it. Yeah, we got some nice contoured micarta going on here. It's all sorts of cool. Yeah, it even has the name of it written right there. PFB01, I think is the, uh, the model number for this guy, since it's uh, not printed on the box there. But, yeah, this is a D2 blade. This is very much a, a budget uh, knife compared to uh, some of them that have come out recently. It's not even K110, just D2, but I was okay with that. Ah, uh, geez, I think this thing is like 30 maybe 35 bucks. Uh, I got it off of Amazon. Um, it's super new. This one came from or had to ship from China. Which means uh, a lot of other places will start getting them, I don't know, maybe in another month or something like that. Uh, Blade HQ will probably carry it since they have uh, kind of the rest of their stuff going on. And White Mountain Knives will probably go ahead and get that anyway as well. Uh, we have a decent heavy stone wash going on there, so that was pretty darn cool. Looks like a fairly thick blade stock, which, yeah, it's alright. Decent... Uh, Thickness behind the edge there, not too bad. Have a little tiny bit of a swedge there. I'm not quite sure why it didn't go all the way, but uh, I suppose that was uh, the designer's kind of thing there. Luck bar access, that's all sorts of good. Action's super good on it, I will give it that, but uh, of course it is pretty, pretty easy to do with uh, kind of a larger knife, especially one that has a, uh, a decent blade stock thickness on it, but uh, still. Non-proud liners, I always love to see that personally. We got a uh, deep carry clip here. Um, not quite mounted towards the absolute back. We do have button screws on here, so they do stick out a little bit, but it is uh, inset into the micarta, and of course two lash points, and they're pretty close together, so this one shouldn't really fall prey too badly to a whole lot of uh, clip wobble. But, uh, all right, yeah, that, that is the knife that I am expecting to actually see today. So, what is the other petrified fish? Because, uh, I only remember one coming to me. Okay, uh, so what I think I need to do is go ahead and contact uh, uh, Petrified Fish there on Amazon and let them know, hey, y'all sent me two. Uh, and they are identical. They have two different colors of micarta, so it's not like they were... I would seriously doubt they were intending to uh, send me two of these guys. But uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and contact them and see what's up. Don't mind getting an extra knife, but, uh, you know, if I already have it, <laughs> it's a little silly. 
Right, okay, and then we have a Tucson. Oh, okay, this is a Jelly Jerry that it seems like everybody and their mama got uh, before me. This has a crazy electric purple anodization on there. That was uh, one of three options. Uh, they also had green, which is uh, quite a bit further up there in the uh, the voltage for the, uh, the anodization. And bronze, which is uh, very, very low. But, you know me... I'm going to go for purple whenever I can. And, uh, wow, they actually did a really, really nice job on the, on the Anno work here. Um, they did polish these a little bit more than they would the, uh, the standard bead blast that you get on, um, most of their, uh, titanium knives. So that purple really, really pops. Of course, if you get any kind of, uh, oil or whatever on there, yeah, you can see the, uh, refringence of color there does change that up a bit. Happens to me whenever I do a little bit of a polish on something before I uh, do an anodization as well. Yeah, it's the TS-369. It's in D2. That's uh, just kind of a given at this particular point here. Oh, look, we got a front flipper as well. Front flip's okay. Um, it's a little heavy, I think, blade is uh before you do that but oh no it's it's not too bad i'm just getting a little bit used to it it's also got um these some studs i do like the uh the knurled or stepped kind of things going on there makes that nice and easy to uh, open up and we have a uh, a drop point a bit of a switch going on in the back there the switch doesn't go all the way to the tip but that's fairly standard for uh, a lot of uh a lot of knives to do, especially uh, production knives, because uh, it's apparently um, fairly easy to um, take a swedge all the way to the tip and then uh, bite a little bit out of that tip. So you don't see that nearly as often. Of course, it does happen, um, you know, being able to get that swedge out there. But, yeah, it's certainly something that uh, production companies uh, tend to shy away from if they can, just because uh, it can introduce just a little bit of a uh, difficulty there but uh overall yeah this is super cool we have uh one screw going into the uh, the micarta this is their um canvas micarta so it is uh, a little bit stronger um than uh, their their other uh, burlap stuff but i still do kind of want to open that up and see uh what kind of uh, troubles that might be going on there looks like uh, i can already Swing that from side to side a little bit, so that might be kind of a bad thing. But, uh, yeah, might as well. We'll go ahead and do that. It's only one screw here. Push that Chicago screw out of the way. And, yeah. Just one of them in there. Uh, doesn't look nearly as bad as uh, a lot of them probably can get. Uh, but I do kind of imagine, uh, both of these corners might get a little, uh, torn up or ragged if you, uh, get this, uh, pocket clip caught on anything. Which, uh, you know, seems to happen, uh, a little bit more in a, uh, in a warehouse, uh, setting than it does, you know, just a standard EDC, but it does happen for sure. Yeah, this is a big dog too. Uh, not, you know, absolutely enormous. But still, we are dealing with uh, fighting with that thumb stud. Uh, looks like overall we are past uh, three and a half inches, but only just. But yeah, fairly subdued design here from um, uh, Jelly Jerry. We don't have any secondary or uh, compound grinds going on on the, uh, the blade there. Um, Nothing super futuristic of it. Uh, I do like the blade coming down a little bit further than um, the end of the scales there. That choil ends up working okay. It's still probably a little bit small for me to uh, fully get my finger on there. But if I'm just choking up for doing some sort of uh, quick work or something like that, not too bad. That jumping works out super, super good. This thing feels really good on that uh, saber grip. Yeah, it really feels like you can uh, poke that into uh, whatever it is that you might be cutting with it. And, yeah, I, 
I would I suppose I would call this a bolster lock. Um I kind of go back and forth between a subframe lock and a bolster lock with some of these things. But uh seeing as how they've milled out the front to uh, get these micarta scales on here, this seems a little bit more like titanium liner territory. So I'll call it a bolster lock. Um because it's nice and thick up top there, but you really have to think about the uh, structural rigidity of the whole thing and a lot of it is going to be kind of thin. If these are a little bit thicker, um, and then they have like an on layer or in layer or something like that, then I'll usually call it a sub frame lock because it, it still has the strength of that standard frame lock. But uh, yeah, it's just underneath some uh, some inlays here. Uh, the only other thing that I could say really is uh, looking at it head on. Uh, there is a slight, but uh, really not much of a lock bar access in there. Still, I don't have much troubles with it there, uh, but it doesn't have any of the uh, the gnarling, so this might be a little bit difficult if uh, you are prone to wearing gloves whenever you're uh, doing some work here, whether it's, you know, required due to uh, OSHA regulations or if, uh, you know, it's just really cold outside or that's just how you roll, I suppose. <laughs> but, uh, okay, yeah, that is the, uh, the TS-369, uh, nice. And the uh, the petrified fish Terra, and uh, apparently another Terra. <laughs> so, alrighty, well this was fun. Uh, I have one more uh, video that I'm gonna do that's uh, I think gonna be interesting, but it might also be super frustrating. So I'll have to see how all of that plays out. Hopefully the audio wasn't bad. I just realized my mic wasn't quite pointing where exactly where I wanted it to. But alrighty, as always, I appreciate y'all for watching. And have yourself a wonderful rest of your day, yo. Subscribe, dude. Look, I got more knives. Uh, I have just gotten over all of the uh, the crazy symptoms from uh, the latest round of uh, vaccines and stuff like that. It kicked my ass for a good, like, 32 to 36 hours. <laughs> but here we are. Okay, so this petrified fish isn't... Uh, one that I actually got today, and I'm not actually really even unboxing it. It's uh, the other Terra. Uh, yeah, I did get a hold of. Um... Oh, interesting. Uh, I did get a hold of uh, Petrified Fish, and I am sending that back to them uh, probably tomorrow. I suppose for the unboxing knife here, uh, I'll use the Best Tech Tulip. I would say, in general, uh, if you are looking for a knife specifically like this, this little Kiridashi kind of thing, um, unless you specifically want a, uh, a locking one, I would go with the Civivi Kiwi, uh, over these guys. Uh, the action, not all that great. Um, and it's kind of difficult to, uh, end up doing that. And the detent for it, um, is not very good on these things. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, hopefully you could, uh, hear that, um, the, uh, little washers or uh, bearing races on the inside uh, don't kind of stay together. Uh, anyway, this was uh, one that I wasn't expecting to get today, so it should be kind of fun to take a look at. I thought this thing was still quite a ways out. I have to really give it my all to have this thing uh, actually deploy. I mostly actually use that for... Um, uh, Peeling oranges, so it's a little bit different. Uh, okay, so this has a little magnetic flap to it. Okay, whether or not it actually looks like it, this is another Alvin uh, knife here. Different packaging, of course, and it doesn't have a little pouch for it. Probably because it's uh, from a different manufacturer, <laughs> since uh, I think a lot of these guys are rebranded. Um, this thing is, uh, it's not a small knife here. It's, uh, yeah, probably right at three and a half inches. We got a titanium frame lock here. Uh, this is a VG10, um, you know, Damascus clad uh, blade going on here. Fairly thick in the blade stock thing. You can definitely see the, uh, the top part here that shows that it has a uh, core steel. And, uh, as you can see from, uh, these different layers here, uh, we do have kind of a, uh, a high saber grind here. There is a fully flat 
portion that probably stops right around there or something like that. Uh, we have some lock bar X's, which, uh, interesting the way that they've done that. We have some nice soft scalloping going on here. Uh, I, of course, do like um, seeing the uh, the segmented, uh, what do you call that, lock bar uh, relief sort of thing going on here. And then we have a, a deep carry clip. Uh, doesn't particularly feel super, super strong, unfortunately. Um, so, you know, you're probably good with that until it actually catches on something. I don't know if that would necessarily just destroy it right out, you know, just bend it all sorts of out of proportion. But it is inset into the titanium, but we have uh, some button locks or button screws going on there. So it does stick up a little bit. Uh, as you can see, we don't have a huge amount of material uh, or room for uh, pant-like material going on there. But still, overall, uh, I the blade shape does... Uh, it's a little bit different, you know, it's a very, very subtle drop point. Uh, but it does kind of remind me quite a bit of the, uh, the Tucson TS, uh, what are that, 21? Let's see, I could probably find it here. Is this the one I was thinking of? Sure, I mean, it's, uh, it's a little bit smaller. I can definitely tell you that, uh, that one's quite the large knife, but, uh, yeah, not too bad, and uh, still fairly darn affordable for, um, you know, what is claimed uh, on Amazon to be a VG10 uh, Damascus clad blade, titanium line, or titanium frame lock for like 60 bucks. Yeah, it ain't bad at all. Um, the action on it doesn't seem bad. I can definitely uh, improve that a little bit uh, just through uh, tuning it up and cleaning it out and stuff like that. Uh, the tip is uh, pretty darn near the top. Oh, you can see here, um, that grind isn't uh, supremely um, uh, consistent on both sides there. I can definitely change that from uh, sharpening it, but uh, <laughs> that's going to be a little knock against it in general. But uh, Okay, let's go ahead on to my uh, standard yellow packaging. And we have a six leaf. And four suns. Let's go ahead and do the six leaf first. Uh, I do believe this is the uh, the SL20. This, just like uh, yeah, all the rest of them, is going to be a rattlesnake design here. We've got a micarta handle. Interesting that they uh, <laughs> inset the pivot in there. That's a, a bit different. And, uh, yeah, here we go with that one. You know, that does remind me of, let's see if I can't find it as I wander away from the, uh, the microphone. I'll be right with you, folks. Ah. Kind of reminds me of this guy, which is also a rattlesnake design. That's the Mossonary uh, MK02. Um, yeah, very, very similar as far as the uh, actual cutting blade length. They both have a hole and a swedge. So, fairly similar in general. This one has a little bit more uh, finger groove kind of things going on here. Yeah, they inset the screws on like all of that. We have a G10 backspacer instead of um, micarta, so that also matches up with the uh, the Mossonary guy here. D2 blade, because uh, absolutely it is. Yeah, we don't have a bad action going on here, but it does make a funky sound. A lot of that probably has to do with um, their fascination with uh, bead, ba bead blast blade finishes. But uh, not bad. We have another uh, example here of um, a plunge grind ending, like, uh, you know, maybe a quarter to a third of an inch up the blade. So uh, definitely in the wrong direction there. So that's unfortunate. 
But uh, hey, at least we don't have uh, proud liners. That is something that uh, drives me crazy. So there is that. But if we get into these guys, these are going to be super new. Okay. This guy is uh, covered in pack and schmutz. Very, very chunky. You can see this one is, uh, well, well, it's really difficult to, uh, at that point uh, to have this thing kind of uh, show that, but it is a 14C28N, as you can see here. We also have the number, this is the TS-379 uh, on here. This is, uh, <laughs> this is a, a weird kind of design going on here. We have a thumb stud on here too, so that's kind of cool. Oh, let's see. I am not seeing a uh, a maker or a maker's mark on this thing. Uh, I don't know if it will help to. Uh, well, I don't know if I can uh, see on the inside if they've done any of that in there. Which uh, nope, I'm not seeing. Uh, it's possible that it's Mazwan Mokhtar, um, just due to uh, him not liking to uh, have some uh, additional things, and you can't really see the uh, the Tucson printed on the blade there. But uh, yeah, if not, uh, I will definitely put the information on uh, up top here because I know it does have a, a designer with it. Uh, this is kind of a chunky beast here. It is a straight black, <laughs> straight backed blade here um with uh more of a uh, uh uh american style tonto here uh pretty high hollow grind going on at the top there and uh it's not super super crazy crazy thin behind the edge but it is thinner than most of tucson's hollow grinds so i will definitely give it that and then of course much more reinforced here at the tip that will mean uh, for me doing a uh, compound angle grinding for uh, uh, the different, uh, for when I sharpen this. Uh, basically, I will do 17 degrees on the, uh, the flat here, and then I have to uh, modify this to be a little bit more like 22 or 23 degrees. That will keep the same kind of uh, bevel look all the way up. Otherwise, this one looks fine, and then this one looks like I have like a, or <laughs> just a ridiculous bevel going on. Uh, well, yeah, we have a bolster lock here. Uh, they are titanium, of course. But, uh, yeah, fairly thin. So I wouldn't really call that a subframe lock necessarily. We get the steel insert on there. Yeah, thumb stud works super, super nice. Internal blade stop pins, and that's pretty good. And a flipper there. It's not bad. It's basically like a three and a half finger knife for me. But if you have a uh, normal two smaller hands, it's going to be a full size one. We got uh, a very, very quick plunge grind down there uh, before the edge. So uh, absolutely love to see that. It is a little difficult to close. I'm not going to lie. Uh, you don't really have much in the way of a... Uh, lock bar access there i think this does stick out proud just a little tiny bit and it is a little bit scooped but uh you do also run into uh that carbon fiber um inlay right there too so you really have to uh be really really far up the blade on there to uh easily disengage that Feels like we do have a, uh, a detent ramp, and it happens uh, super, super quick. So, all right. Well, there's that one. Let's see. What was the other one that I got here? Oh. All right. Well, this one I got in a color variant. Uh, I don't remember off the top of my head if this one, when I purchased it, was only available in the... Uh, in the color variant, but uh, 
Either way, it was definitely the choice that uh, I wanted to make on this one. Okay, so we have a hole. We don't really have uh, other deployment options going on there. Ooh, yeah, that's what I'm kind of talking about. I do like that blade shape a lot. This is a Max Chachuk design, the TS-376, or 376, sorry. This one's in D2. It's not 14C28N like uh, this one in particular here. Super uh, deep crenellations going on here. Not super, super sharp, but uh, definitely works for uh, what this thing is going for. And, uh, yeah, we have a um, nice finger choil going on here. Super nice uh, stone wash, as far as I'm concerned, going on with it. Interesting of the uh, the way that the uh, hardened steel lock bar insert is uh, done on this with the uh, the raised thing, kind of like they do with their um, uh, button locks a little bit. Pocket clip, nice and long, feels nice and stiff, uh, has a decent... Um, Flat area, so that's not going to be too bad for uh, closing it up or anything like that. Uh, super large lanyard slot. Uh, this one has a hidden one, by the way. Uh, nice wide pocket clip on here. But it does uh, come down to uh, almost a ball bearing-ish kind of thing. Yeah, that feels super, super nice for uh, doing a uh, flick out. Let's see, how long is this guy? Yeah, this is over three and a half inches. Yeah, it's a big boy. And uh, I can already tell um, that Max Chachuk was definitely involved in uh, doing this. I mean, otherwise, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. But um, yeah, with this uh, pivot being small, uh, I'm guessing that this also has the, uh, the much smaller... Um, uh, bearing size that uh, he likes to put on his knives. Um, almost all of them. I do suppose that the uh, the the Vandal, the one that he did with uh, uh, Lee from LTK, uh, does use uh, multi-row bearings. But uh, still, this is a is definitely a big, stout, crazy guy here. Nice and thin behind the edge. That is going to be quite nice for um, the slicing potential on there since we have such a uh, a tall thing that it does come down to a very, very nice angle for. So that's super great. Love to see that there. We do have lock bar access going on with it. Uh, so that's great for everybody who likes that. We have some scalloped sort of things here. Um, they're actually a little thinner than uh, you would normally see from a lot of uh, Tucson frame locks by the time it uh, does actually get down there. Still going to be nice and uh, nice and strong, just a little bit different. We have a ridiculously large um, set of uh, pins up top here. One for uh, back there and one for when it's out and open. Uh, I can just barely scratch the blade there if I dig my fingernail into it. So that should be nice and protected. Yeah, this thing seems interesting. I will say um, the, uh, the lock bar here, it's a little bit sharp, uh, which really wouldn't be that big of a deal for the most part. Unless uh, you still do need something to uh, anchor on there if you're going to um, use the uh, the thumb hole uh, for that. So uh, for me, I would probably end up just uh, reverse flicking this thing uh, much more often. It's just a little bit more comfortable. And uh, yeah, the pivot is not uh, in the center. It's uh, dropped down a little bit. And that certainly helps for uh, having that blade stick down so you have a little bit more, more um, knuckle clearance than you would otherwise have. But uh, yeah, there we go. We got some, uh, some interesting knives here. Uh, I was expecting three. I got four. <laughs> and uh, I have two really, really fun ones coming tomorrow from Blade HQ. Uh, I thought all of these were going to come on the same day, but they didn't. So we'll have to uh, open those tomorrow. But yeah, we got the uh, the 
Uh, what is it? Six Leaf uh, SL20 right there. We have the uh, uh, Tucson TS379. We got the 376. And then we have uh, this Alvin, which uh, I also don't quite remember the uh, the model, num uh, model number of. It's another one of those R8 blah 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 ones but uh i will definitely have that information there as well so cool i suppose i shall uh catch y'all tomorrow when i get those uh those other knives in from blade hq